You're in? Oh, yes, you're awesome. entering. No, 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 I'm talking about Doge. Uh -huh. oh. Doge is out until we find nothing better to say. Okay, up. streams is up, stream is up, stream is up. Since? No. Now. Just now. And we're down. That was a fuck up. That was a dead start. <laughs> Go ahead. Is he on it yet? Once again, welcome to the South Africa podcast. It is uh, here at 8 o'clock on a Sunday. Um, I hope you guys have all enjoyed your weekend. Um, and joining us from Cape Town, as usual, are Scratch and Anfu. Oh. Uh. And myself from today's Centurion. <laughs> yeah, today's going to be a bit of an interesting day because, well, uh, the guy who's hosting the stream, Anfu, is currently like, not really at home. So there might be more of what you just heard. More technical. <laughs> Yeah, it shouldn't be too bad. It just dropped 29 frames. It was one second. One second yeah, well, of nothing. <laughs> yeah, well, well, we would love to invite Rackman at some point. Uh, but the thing is, is that I, last time I checked, you didn't have any microphone set up. Yeah, usually we need someone who can actually talk. So We can invite you right now, if you'd like. Who, who needs to be up? Sorry? Rack Rackman. Oh. Yes. He asks to be invited. We could invite him. Although, yeah, like I said, if you have a mic, that would be uh, not really preferable so much as mandatory. Yeah, the, the, cool. that is um, one one of those things that um, will be mandatory. <laughs> yes. He does have one, apparently. Uh, what I can say is, is that the only reason why it's echoey or why um, uh, Unpoo's site sounds a bit echoey is because he's in a massive office at this point. Somewhere. And I'm alone. <laughs> lonely. I am so lonely. So I can't I can't laugh out loud as well. I'm afraid that there might be somebody upstairs or <laughs> that might hear me. <laughs> uh, you might freak someone out like there's a demon in the server room or something. <laughs> no, they they kinda do freak you out sometimes. I can very much imagine. I think we just lost Ivic. Really? Ah, oh, boy. Okay. Well, regardless of his contribution or not, I'm at least gonna, uh, yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, everyone who's on the stream, we'd like your input on a question that's been been burning a little bit on the forums, and I've been sort of thinking about this as well. Um, really, nothing. What? Oh, boy. What about nothing? It says, yeah, uh, he likes says he can't really hear anything. Um, I, I'll i double check the stream quickly, but I think it should be up. No, it um, is up. It should be up. Okay, yeah. Yeah, no, the no, stream is fine. Uh, I'll just type it in. Um, yes, you guys kicked me off the call. No, we didn't. No, we I, di I dialed you again. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, but basically the topic at hand is yeah, something that's been up on the forums and a question that I've been asking as well, um, is how do we introduce the furry fandom to people from the outside? How would you, like, A, is someone who has an interest into it, into the fandom, and potentially B, how would you uh, show it to, like, a complete outsider who's, like, just has, like, general questions instead of wants to join. You can the show them the dark side. Yeah, well, For affinity. Funny. Yeah, well, do you want to? Do you want to risk that? <laughs> no, um, no, actually I think the the main characteristic is it's just uh, treated as, uh, my personal view on it will be to treat it as something other than uh, something that has been in existence forever, right? And mm -hmm. as uh, had it have has had all the ridicule that uh, had had 
that people talk about because when you, when you, when you talk Shut about up. when you talk about this with uh, the average person is normally they go with the answer like what what is this this is probably more than 50% of the people I know online it's like what what is this fandom we that you're talking about so you you cannot treat it as something like you know this fandom yes the one that was like terrible and bad <laughs> you, that, you should avoid doing that yeah obviously that the, the one that was portrayed in that show that everybody hates them <laughs> yeah well yeah i'm i'm still not really convinced that that is the average person's perception of the of the fandom yeah but but, but, but but I've seen a lot of videos where people that it, they immediately just drop in that direction, and I'm like, why? Not not the average perception. I'm talking about furries themselves that go like they they go all persecuted always, even when they're talking to somebody that has no fucking clue what they're talking about. What so the general <laughs> like? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ivik. No, no, no. Carry on. No, it's, uh, it's just weird that I haven't really seen anyone who gets like immediately defensive. I could be wrong though. I mean, maybe my exposure to the like, excuse me, the the side of the people who are on the forums more often than not, like the international forums, is a bit limited. But I've never really seen one seen people get like super defensive about it. I've seen, but uh, off of the bat, and that immediate defense is a problem. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. That is obviously a problem. Ivik, your turn. Uh, yeah, uh, I was going to say that, I mean, if you look at some of the stuff that uh, Blue the Dragon has put on recently, uh, mm -hmm. he tries to sort of, like, the thing is, is that you, we as, as furries, we, we put ourselves out there, and, I mean, we, we know what the sort of, you know what the, the, the risks are, we know what we're supposed to be doing, we know how we're supposed to be uh, attending to the issue. But at the end of the day, um, if somebody doesn't like it, you know, we, we, we tend not to turn the other cheek, and we tend to get really defensive about it. And yeah. that, that, that defensive motion is just possibly one of the worst things that we can do. Yeah. At least in my personal And I, I think that it's, it's, it's a horrifying thing to do. Because the thing is, is that as soon as you become defensive, you're immediately losing. Yeah. You're showing that this is the reason, this is the reason why we can have nice things. Yep. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. But so, um, yeah, that's the one half of the question. The other half would then be uh, what would the proper reaction be? Like, what would you, well, what would you have to do? If that's, look, I mean, the thing is, is that if you are going to be attacked by somebody, then I would say that yeah. the first thing that you should actually do is say, well, you know what? I have my opinion, you have your opinion. And I'm sorry that, that you know you feel that way, and I'm hoping that maybe we can talk about this at some point in a normal in, yeah. and interesting fashion. And in I can talk to you about words, it. In the immortal words of the dude, well, that's just like your opinion, man. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and if they do accept it, which they, they, they technically do, I mean, if you look at the way that, or at least the way that um, furries have been accepted to an extent at something as big as um, what like uh, like Comic Rage or Rage I suppose <coughs> Comic Con and Rage and everything like that I mean they get accepted quite well I mean it's like ooh you have a tail that is so cool what are you a furry and you go yeah and they go oh okay <laughs> and then they walk away yeah no, why I don't want to get associated with these creeps <laughs> <laughs> no I'm joking but that's the thing is, you should actually be, um, if you're really going to care about what people are thinking about it, then you're worrying too much about shit. People think shit about everything. If you, uh, yeah, so if you're going to get into a defensive mode, that's just fucking sad. But there is some opinions that is legitimate, eh? Yeah, that is the other thing. No, um, when, when, it, when it comes when when it comes down to like the erotic sections of the fandom, you have to understand is that it 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 can tend to it it is sort of like a fetish, not entirely, but it is. Mm -hmm. Look, I mean, in that same sense, what about anime people? 
It's the same thing. I mean, like in all fairness, a, a lot of a lot of the sort of like porn influences in respect to the fetishist side actually comes from that side. I know. It's yeah, the same. It's, it's been around it's longer. The original, I like, hey, it's been around longer. I think. Far so, longer. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same thing. But, uh, but the other the, the other thing is is. Um, I believe you get a greater diversity in the people in the anime fandom that would actually watch the erotic art and um, th that would classify themselves as anime fans, right? Than they are with furries. You think? I do actually I mean, think so. Because, I mean, uh, you can watch Pokemon on TV. You understand? And you can like the show. And, mm -hmm. be and become a fan of it. But it wouldn't necessarily classify you as a uh, as a furry or an anime fandom person, even. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or Dragon Ball Z, more anime, right? Yeah, it's rather going that direction. So it, it's yeah, you have to actually kind of think about how the the group split. Uh, furries establish themselves a little bit more into it than I think other fandoms, and you have to be okay with the fact that people might not really understand that because I mean life is life people do things like work eat and that's that's what's worrying troublesome situations they don't they, they believe that doing something like having an interest in something and actually engaging with it is sometimes a little bit awkward you understand mm -hmm. and you can't have a problem with people thinking that way I mean it's that they have their opinions about all sorts of shit. So, <laughs> but uh, so that uh, that is the thing. But how to open how to open the fandom up to people is to let people understand that we are able to think that way instead of going, "Oh my god, I'm so persecuted." No, no, no. <laughs> all right. Or am I wrong? You guys aren't you guys aren't attacking the topic. You guys are just listening. <laughs> Again, the thing is, is that um, you say it like that. And at, at the end of the day, I mean, I agree with you. We put ourselves out there. That's the thing. We we literally put ourselves out there to be able to actually speak to people about this. Uh -huh. um, add Raccoon to the call. Okay. Well, yep. I'll give. I'll, I'll share his details. All right, but hold on a second. Does he have a Skype account? That is his. He just got one. Th that is his username. He he just got one. That is his username. Excuse. Not his real name or anything like that. That's gonna display. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. 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 There he is. Hi all. Okay. Um. Yeah. Let's. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um. Your yeah, yeah. Uh, and your again, your concern is sort of uh, it. It's valid, and you make a good point. Like, I mean, we are putting ourselves out there, and we have to stand up for ridicule. But um, the the real thing I want to touch on is like, okay, you you've told someone, or they found out, or whatever that you're a furry, and um, the it, yeah, instead of the whole like oh, that's gross reaction, they're like, oh, this is interesting. Tell me more. What are, you know, what are the resources that I that I can go to? That is that is what I sort of want want to touch on. Yeah, uh, 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 sorry, sorry. I was just talking about the attitude that uh, that it gets looked down upon by the general public, and it's that uh -huh. uh, that attitude. So uh, yes, it, uh, if you can overcome that barrier, to introduce somebody would be a lot easier. You understand? It would. Yeah. Okay, I'm adding Raccoon quickly, and then we can go on with what she just mentioned. Hello! Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you loud yes. and clear. Hello. Oh, good. You are a bit Seems soft than I tested. Okay, now can I... Need... Maybe boost your mic a little bit? Mm -hmm. I said, is there a way you could boost your mic a little bit, Raccoon? I'm not sure how. I was no, 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 it's, it's perfectly fine now. Okay, cool. Yeah. Let me okay. just add so, your name. Yeah. Yeah. So we've covered that now. 
Um, <clears throat> same question be begged. How do you, yeah, um, despite how, like, how people would sort of look down on the, on the community or whatever, or given their, like, first impressions, how do you um, bring someone into the fandom who seems sort of, whose curiosity is piqued by the idea? As opposed, yeah. That's basically my question. I thought you'd said earlier this wasn't about bringing people in, it was just people that were curious. Yeah, but... Yeah, but I mean, if we wanted to bring them in. Yeah, if like, some, yeah, someone was curious, easily, like... Easily, 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 yeah, where where could you yeah you know, where could you point them? Where can you like show them to say like, hey, look, we're just like a bunch of normal people, or or this is what the subculture is all about, or whatever. Well, if you wanted to just show them the normal people, I think you could then start from saying like how everyone likes anthropomorphics, for example, in like their childhood, and just say it's a continuation of that, or in yeah. games like playing as a Khajiit or Argonian in Skyrim. Yeah, the valid point. Introducing somebody to the fandom with the idea, hey, did you like uh, Robin Hood? Or Fox and Hound? Or Bugs Bunny? <laughs> hey, you see, you like it. You're, you're a furry, so you have no choice. You have to come to this side. <laughs> that's, a bit, that's a bit extreme. Just a li little bit, a little bit. It's quite a jump. Yeah. Hello, this is the way I am. <laughs> and I suppose there's a, there's like a metric ton of like web comics you can point them at as well. That's like, I mean, it, yeah, it, it doesn't necessarily have to do directly with the furry fandom, but there's a ton of anthropomorphic characters in a lot of web comics. I mean, I think I don't know if you remember um, Cheap Thrills. Cheap yeah. Thrills. Yeah, Cheap Thrills. It was a web comic that I think it's on hiatus now, but it was like a really sort of. Um, dark slice of life kind of uh, webcomic that I really actually enjoyed lots of feels but it was it was mm -hmm. still like a, a pretty good uh, comic regardless and yeah uh -huh. that's sort of yeah you know, that's sort of the kind of stuff I would point someone at just to tell them like see this is basically just sort of like life seen through different lens hmm taking my, people yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Letting people immediately go into something like comics or something. I don't it is very true. It is nice. I don't know if that is, is all. Sorry, Ivik, you wanted to say? Ivik. His network is giving trouble. Yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah, this is not news to us, though. <laughs> yep. <laughs> all the time. Yeah, quite a lot. I mean, he's on 3G, so it does crap up from time to time. Yeah, yeah, but um, introducing people directly um, immediately into comic books, I don't know if that is a good idea. You know, a lot of people don't actually read the, uh, mm. uh, uh, graphic novels, so you... <sighs> no, not necessarily comic books, but just like sort of web comics. I mean, it's, it's, it, yeah, it's not like sprawling novels, it's just like short stories told on like a semi, like daily or weekly basis. Mm. Whatever, but yeah, that that is, I suppose, an entry point, albeit a bit of a one that requires investment more so than and the, anything else. The other thing with uh, the furry comics is, is they usually actually portray like normal real life situations, mm -hmm. but they just swapped out the characters, and mm -hmm. it 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 kind of feels like a lot of a lot of the web comics uh, that portray um, anthropomorphic art is kind of. The art, the, the the people that's looking after, uh, that is looking for the art will find it there. But uh, the people that is not interested or looking at that would probably only see it as, well, it, it could be anybody. You understand? Mm. Yeah. And so it's more sort of a coincidental link than actual. Um, what's his name? Well, like, it it depends. Furry thing. It depends on what the story <laughs> is about. There probably is a, a story that is more. Uh, there are obviously not probably is uh, that uh, that requires the characters to be anthropomorphic. You understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. For example, I think yeah. that's mm -hmm. isn't that fitted into a lot? Yeah, where, where they said like furry is not quite like the same sort of like genre as like sci-fi or something because it's 
it goes over everything. So it's more an appreciation of a certain aesthetic. So you could take something that doesn't have to have anthropomorphics, but just put them in because you prefer it that way. Yes. And uh -huh. so, I mean, I don't think you'd need to find something that has to be, let's say, furry in itself or made by furries. Because, I mean, a lot of people obviously find the fandom through other things. That's I mean, it true. even starts that way. So. Yeah, no, uh, but uh, for the comic thing, if, if you want to introduce uh, something like that, you have to just play your cards right and have the right comic. That's something that actually requires the characters to be that type of character. Another thing is, it's even like a good movie like Guardians of the Galaxy. That character was actually pretty f funny. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you take something like that and tell it, well, we're a group of people that have a... Uh, we like the concept of things like that, and we have cartoonists and artists and uh, musicians. I, t I still don't understand what they do, what, what they mean by furry music, um, and <laughs> so the idea. And uh, this is this is what it's all about. And then we have people that fursuit and so forth. So, I don't know, uh, to, to introducing somebody into a comic is, it, it depends on what that person like. If you know the person well enough to know that he'll probably be interested in it, then it's fine. But how, do, how can you actually gener generally attract people towards it? That, that is, I think, the main question you ask right at the beginning. Uh -huh. I think that's going to differ depending on what person you're talking to. I mean, you'll then change your approach to their interests. Yeah. So, yeah. That's true. So it, it, it that, that depends, though. Um, I mean, obviously, you can try to cater as much as you possibly can, but at the end of the day, if they can't get their head around it, then then what do you do then? Like, then you um, leave them. <laughs> if they're not interested, no, then they're not interested. <laughs> I, suppose, I suppose if they're not, if the fandom doesn't strike them as something interesting, then you move on. I can't force anyone to play. Like play board games with me every day of the week, but I at least give them a try. You mm -hmm. don't give anybody a chance when you play freaking board games. Why? I know because you you guys play like magic and shit, and I seen how you play it. I know that you're gonna just rip me apart. Mag magic is <laughs> it's the only way to learn. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting fucked over. Um, Not but a yeah, board magic game. It's a card game. A uh, card game, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Not just that, I mean, magic is... Tabletop yeah, game. takes a while to learn. Something like... Isn't it? Yeah, but <laughs> something like ticket, ticket to Ride is pretty quick to learn, and anyone can actually win it. Even people who just picked it up, I mean, that's happened more than once. But uh, but generally, I think um, when we're talking about... I'm, I'm actually not concerned about engaging with a specific individual and trying to interest this person in the furry fandom, because that is something that I believe is actually quite um, strange to do if you don't know this person very well or if he doesn't know about the fandom or anything like that but no. not not strange in a way that I would I wouldn't actually do it it's strange in a way that I think um, I, I believe yeah the person should first be exposed to what it is before he, he actually gets fed some information and then when he gets into it he gets all the information you understand Hmm? So, so, uh, but how do you attract the general public? How do you how do you make the fandom look more appealing? You just do oh, as you normally do. Is it? I mean, no, consider I that half the like, sorry, consider it go. Uh, all right, no, go on. Um, I mean, the thing is, is that if you look at the way that that a lot of the furry conventions have been going and obviously a lot of them have to you know assign themselves as an NPO and I mean as a non-profit organization you've got certain sort of obligations in respect to who you're paying and how you're paying them and I mean if you are raising funds for a specific cause if you look at say uh, well actually every single con that I've seen so far has some sort of cause that they're donating to and I mean if you make that very well known then obviously that should at least point us in the right direction. But I mean, then again, um, if, the, if the KKK decided to donate money to puppies without homes, then would that make the KKK any less, you know... KKK. <laughs> angry? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
that would be actually very funny. <laughs> but um, no, we. What I'm talking about in general is if you look at the artwork, right? You actually go in. You actually realize that the majority of people find a fandom through it, uh, in, whether it's erotic or. Uh, uh, normal art and that's because they've probably searched something online and found a link for it that is probably their character either anthropomorphized uh, anthrop anthropomorphized if there is such a word <laughs> uh, I think that's to um, own it you, you understand what I mean is that then they find it that way uh, so it, the, the main entrance for most people is still via through the artwork. That's my opinion. I have no statistics, so please don't take my word for it. But um, that's what I would guess. Uh, well, I think it, it's a... I mean, most of the surveys I've found, it's generally a visual thing. So most people rank like the artwork as the most important thing in the fandom. Yeah. It's just... Yeah. So, so that is just one. Uh, that's one thing. Having a website in South Africa that actually um, is a forum. We don't host art though, but I think that is just a major technical obstacle, <laughs> and we don't have like millions of artists. Well, I, yeah, it, it, it's not so much a technical obstacle. I mean, anyone can post something in the in the art section there, but I mean. Yeah, but it's it's on a it's forum. Like a it, gathering. That'll be in you know, That'll just be in like one of the forums. Yeah, it's not it's not like a site dedicated for it. Um, but uh, well, but there are also already sites, so there's no need to duplicate functionality. Yeah, that, yeah, we know if that. Someone's no, no. already on FA. You know, mm. they can link there. Yeah. So interlinking with fur is or Zetafer, I think it's the group. I can't remember who made it, but I know there's nothing happening <laughs> on, on something like FA. Uh, so free, does so free have groups? It does. I started a South Africa group there, or it was just actually under ZF or something. Mm. It's not exactly a huge mm. amount of activity. I think it's it's pretty much just contrast adding his things into the group <laughs> since I haven't made anything in forever. <laughs> yeah, that that is yeah. that is. Uh, but interlinking stuff like that is also important because then it it, it helps people realize that um, when they find the site, they can see oh, what is this? Oh, these guys exist. Oh, well, my country exists in the site. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, it, it, it's it's one of the reasons why we also like do what we do. <clears throat> So, well, so several occasions that can that can attract people, but it can also I don't know it can, no it can't actually cause any alienate them? no it won't alienate anybody any uh, the only thing that alienates people out of the fandom is some of the people in the fandom <laughs> yeah I suppose look I mean there are people in the fandom who actually alienate people in the fandom yes <laughs> yeah, but that's sort of, that's sort of interpersonal. And that's not a problem with the furry fandom, that's a problem with everywhere. <laughs> uh, you'll get it in the anime fandom, definitely. And, yeah, so... Attracting people towards the fandom, still original topic. I don't know, maybe all the massive... Con. <laughs> Jeez, that sounds like a small idea. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, it sounds very familiar to me. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I've heard this discussion like. A I'm not time. sure you actually need to attract people to the fandom because, I mean, it winds up being a fandom. So it it, people in, people encounter these things in their day to day life, and it's just if they're interested in that, then they'll migrate to yes. the fandom as long as they know it's there. That's it. That's I exactly think it's awareness. That's exactly what I'm actually also sort of getting at. But the thing is, is the more content exists, the more possible it would be for a person that wouldn't have been interested might get interested, and that is in, in and that is an essence in the artwork. So it it might be that there is a character that there's just like ten images of, and he really likes this character since whenever, and now all of a sudden there's two hundred images of it. Do you understand? Mm, yeah. 
Same thing. Sort of. True. Well, sort of, but uh, what, then what you I get... Just, what, <laughs> hmm? I mean, uh, in, in, in respect to South Africa, I mean, we have Nanuk and we have, like, Electro Cat who have really sort of broken through into the sort of arti artistic world on the international side. But the only issue that stands there is the fact that because they, you know, were spurned in in, in essence at times from from the own from their own community, they don't necessarily like tout us pretty often. It's the same thing with somebody like I mean, there, there are a lot of people who are from South Africa to begin with, and just say, I'm not necessarily proud to be from South Africa because like South Africa furs are dicks. Are we in a general? There on are. a general term, like they, they would generalize like that. They had okay. a bad in, they had like a bad run in with like five of them, and then suddenly like everyone's a dick. Mm, right. South like Africans you. are probably the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Raccoon, do you have anything to weigh in there? Uh, not really on that point, no. I would say, so, so we can establish so we've never experienced it. it. Hello? You have problems with some people, but... Yeah, yeah I don't know. <coughs> well, I haven't had really problems with people. I would have to admit, um, I think the problem could be that South Africans might be the problem. <laughs> we have really uh, backstabbers in this country. I have to admit. Okay. Is is that from the South Africa uh, from from the first stage or how? No, it's just the general country. Yeah. Everybody, <laughs> everybody. Oh. The re the reason why I'm sitting here now in the office is because of people like that. <laughs> but oh well. No, uh, what, someone who, someone who shanked you into taking the late night shift or what? Yes, I wasn't supposed to be on standby. Ugh. <laughs> Ass hats. But no, uh, it's... Uh, no, man, I'm, that's completely off topic. I'm just actually joking around. No, uh, but uh, you will always get bad people. Or you get you will always get a run-in with a person and uh, you two don't get along, right? So I don't understand why people generalize uh, the entire fandom that way. Oh, it's it's that's, that's a fair point. But I mean, like, the thing is that I have had several run-ins with people who, because say uh, somebody had a hangover on on one weekend that um and they didn't greet somebody that this person has literally gone as far as to say that they will never say that they're from South Africa uh, a South African fur and that they've renounced them their, their themselves from the fandom itself and i mean like the thing is that yeah fine maybe it's a bit overreacting from their side but at the end of the day boy, hello, i mean yeah. it, it, let's let's just say that i mean it took about 4 to 5 hours to get the person back on track what? Dyer, why do you want to be a problem? And why do you want to push shit for people? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Dyer says he wants to be a problem. I'm like, why? Why do you want to be the asshole in the room? Because it makes things interesting. It makes the group of people actually look like a TV show. <laughs> one, one. Is that what we want? You so an infighting group of people in Big Brother. You need the dick. <laughs> you need, if if yeah. if it's not if you don't have that, then it just doesn't make for fun TV. <laughs> We're not. This isn't a TV show. I know. Together, <laughs> it, it can be. It can be. If if we raise enough funds, we can start. Um, I'm South not African, going in. Uh, ask Big Brother house. you at. I'm not going yes, to I'm so hard. going in there. Dude, you're coming with, it doesn't matter if you don't want Why? to. Oh. Why? Why do I need to be there? What, are you guys serious, Ivik? <laughs> I'm, I'm being absolutely 100% serious right now. So serious that, like, my serious face can't be more serious. <laughs> but that you can't see. <coughs> we're we're going to have, like, we're, we're going to have two to, th two to four, like, um, uh, let's, let's just call them ambitious people. Uh, and then we're gonna have two to four like c complete introverts, and then um, two to four sort of midline, and then we're gonna get a whole bunch of people who uh, can't live without internet for a week. And put them in a place where there's no internet. 
and, and, and put them into a house that has no internet. Wait, you want, to, you want to take, right, a bunch of South African furries, you take yeah. away their internet access, Yes. and you want to throw them in the same house for a week. And no booze. Apparently. This, and, this will be a problem for me. And no booze. You're going to have the worst fucking show <clears throat> ever. Yeah, that sounds like a bad, that sounds like a bad weekend away. <laughs> it wouldn't even make a good show. It would just be terrible. Oh, it's that. <laughs> but that it it might attract people. I don't know. <laughs> uh. Well, I mean, the thing is, is that you would have infighting for the first in the first fifteen minutes, and none of them would be able to tweet to, to tweet about it. Yeah, there's no place for them to go to rant except your face. Yeah, yeah but I if think that's just fine they because they can try to go for my to face. You. You know, I'd, I'd, much, I'd much rather have someone rant on a space that I don't need to be in, like Twitter, than like ranting at me. Seriously, I never. Like, again, that's just that's just me. I never rant. I should actually use the venting and support section of a site a little bit more. But also, I'm I'm terrible at giving advice. So I read the stuff. Be, uh, first to think that sometimes the people don't read it. I read it, I just don't want to give advice because I might give the wrong advice. <laughs> terrible no such thing as a bad way. Yeah, uh, Sorry, I was, about to, I was about to say that there's no such thing as a bad answer, but um... Yeah. You're, you're a teacher, you know there's a, something as, some, a, such a thing as a bad answer. And there's uh, such a thing as there's bad advice, there is. It, no, it, it's the way the individuals you want to commit suicide. Jump. <laughs> individuals Jump. deal with problems different ways. <laughs> so uh, look, we're not going to commit to this. How are you going to commit to anything in life? Jump. No. <laughs> <laughs> so one big a... commitment. You commit yeah. to that. You don't need to commit again. Just take the plunge. <laughs> that, that, that's another Go thing. Uh, if if you want to make the fandom look more friendly, uh, you need to actually kind of avoid this drama crap. That uh, I, if fuck a dude, before you enter a site, the first things you read is like drama, 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 drama. Right? Dude, for my own sanity, I'd love that we can avoid the drama. Seriously, I'm sure there's a lot of people who just go like, you know what, I. I'd sort of love to be in the fair fandom, but there's so much drama going well, on, I'm just like, ah. Well, I, I just avoid it, but even the fact that I'm just talking about it now is bad. It, it, this is what I mean, it's, it, it always gets talked about. It's not that there is always drama, but there's this talk about drama. You understand? You know what, it, you know what that actually is? What? It's, it's talking about drama in an attempt to avoid it. It's like, there is a lot of drama, but we hope that there won't be. And we won't that we won't talk <laughs> about it as well, which is r like a fucking paradox, and I'm sitting here going like... I find it frustrating because I hear people say like, oh, there's all this drama, and I'm like, what drama? I haven't heard about it, and they're like, no, yeah, I won't tell you. N and neither, like, everybody always chats about it, and it shit happens, and I just sit like, oh, fuck, I don't care. I don't even know what's going on. I really don't care. It's, <laughs> yeah, anyway. <laughs> the thing is, is that a lot of that drama the that they, is. When, when it, but that's it. Like a lot of the internet is drama. It doesn't matter where you go. I mean, <clears throat> you can take the nicest guy on the internet on a YouTube site, and this person has donated something like millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars over like the course of the last three years to very very good causes, and has attempted to help whatever they possibly can. And people will still flame on that person's page because he's not up to standard or he's not doing this or he's being such a dickhead or he's saying something that's stupid or he's not playing the games that you want that's to play. That's called haters. And these people s mm -hmm. Yeah, but the thing is, is that that's exactly it. Those haters exist. It doesn't matter where it is. Yeah, but people I mean, go there are people hate. People go out yeah. of their way to hate on, to, on, on somebody and it actually it works for those people, eh? Remember, uh, uh, marketing is still marketing, whether it's bad or good marketing. Once you get people talking about somebody, right, then even if it's in a bad light, if, if, if people start talking, how 
weird uh, this actress is and how she dresses and uh, the, the, it's a uh, last music video. Oh my god, it's so terrible. What are you going to do? You're going to check it. <laughs> that's called yeah. that's called shock marketing. <laughs> don't, don't even talk about that dress right now. <laughs> oh yeah. What, what color is that dress? <laughs> I'm not talking about yeah. too much of that. Uh, go oh, away. I was going to um, say, um, oh, yeah. this quote I read about that, like basically the opposite of um, love isn't hate, it's indifference. Yeah. Like, uh, even if you like hate something, it's still taking up mental real estate, just ignore it. Yeah. So actually, is actually what Dyer uh, uh, Dyer might have a point. He wants to be a problem for right. Maybe if we make enough shit in this place, then <laughs> then it would market itself that way as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like only only the hardcore people that can handle crap like that comes here. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. I, I feel it's a little bit, yeah. <laughs> do we really want the crowd, um, yeah, do we really want to attract the crowd that expects drama? You, you do know that I'm absolutely not serious at the moment. Eh? I know. I know, but still, I don't want that. Consider shit. this, right? Uh, Consider we have we have casual Fridays. Um, we have casual Friday. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have casual Fridays uh, like every single week, and the thing is, is that most Fridays I tend to dress up in something quite interesting, uh, just to like catch an eye or something like that. Sometimes it's a rugby jersey, sometimes it's you know what I would normally okay. wear on a on on during the weekend. I don't have a tail, um, but I Your will possibly wear start. one if I had it. Will you wear a tail to work? I would probably, but at the end of the day, I don't. I I can't fit into the care wear shirt anymore. Aww. I won't do that. I'm yeah. sorry. Any case, so I was wearing. Um, you remember that pendant that that um, that Helios made for me? Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, I, saw I was that. wearing that and like another. Sh and I was wearing that. I was yeah. I was wearing that and another shirt that also had like a wolf howling at the moon. And the thing is, is that I walked into class and I did my class. I did everything that I needed to do. I had everybody's attention. Blah blah blah. And then two students come up to me and say, "So, what's with the wolves?" And I kind of mm -hmm. looked at them and I was like, "I like wolves." And they're like, "Okay." And the one guy's like, "So you're not a furry?" I'm like, "Yes, I am." And I actually gave them the website. <laughs> I was like, yeah, no, go to Zedifer. Just, just go there. Check it out. If you're, if you're interested, join. If you're not, then don't. But I mean, like, I. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much it. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, they haven't questioned me about it, about it since. They haven't asked me any other awkward questions. And, um, been to and the thing is, is that it. Yeah, they've been to every single class. They love my class. Oh, okay, just checking. <laughs> so well, what is all the negativity? <laughs> What was that? <laughs> what is with all the negativity? <laughs> I'm just wondering. You're talking about the dress again. Huh? No. No, we were talking about uh, the negativity regarding, well, have they been to class again? <laughs> Stuff like that. It would creep people out that much, dude. It's just, it's very funny that they actually, they, okay, well, so some people obviously know, but it's very funny that they would actually kind of ask you straight up uh, about it. And now a bunch of students have a furry lecture, and they know it. Yeah, that is a little bit... That would be a little bit something that I would have used for rocket fuel, dude, when I was in university. But that was me, and I was, uh, yeah, weird. But, <laughs> but the thing is, is that at the end of the day... I mean, I, I respect, or I, I ask for a specific amount of respect, and I give them the same back. I mean, I'm going to tell them about what I do, because at the end of the day, I talk about my, po I talk about this podcast as well, um, on, on, not necessarily by name, but the thing is, is that I tell them that, you know what, I'm part of a podcast, and the thing is, is that it involves, like, a lot of things that I have to talk about. Okay. Yeah, you okay. should tell them to listen to it. <laughs> Maybe they, um, maybe they are. Well, that's how you get more furs, is it? 
Listen to the recruiting at the university. <laughs> yeah, that's in their mind. Oh, oh, look. He's doing it the best way, recruiting them at the fucking thing. university. Yeah. <laughs> All you need to do is just, you know, be normal. Not even be normal, be you. Uh, and if they like you, then they won't mind. Just make sure that you are not uh, uh, somebody that people don't like. <laughs> yeah. I swear in class. I literally swear in class. Yeah, none of my lectures. I also well. throw objects at them. <laughs> I, I literally throw objects at them. I've thrown pen lids. I've thrown, um, I've thrown D and D dice. Dude, remember Mrs. Domini used to throw like pens and shit at people, but her aim wasn't that good, so she kept hitting the next to the person who was asleep. I got thrown by an entire drafting table. Oh, Come again? Wow. But that was an high school. By a drafting table. I got a, a draw. I just turned around and this is, table is coming towards me. At your face. I'm, I'm, That's a bit serious. It though. missed me. It missed me. Yeah, but I actually I literally almost collapsed the wall behind me because I was. <laughs> in, uh, it was like this weak ass wall, and I had uh, one of those uh, Tekken Hacker. Uh, yeah. I was just chipping off like the plaster, <laughs> but actually it was my friend, and I was just looking at it, and when I just did one hit, like this freaking probably a meter high section of plaster. <laughs> <laughs> and because they just why, built why this thing. You, why were you breaking a wall with a T square? Because my friend showed me, hey, look how weak this is. And then I was, because they just built this thing. And then I'm like, oh, <laughs> look, at, look at it. And I'm like, no way, it can't be that weak. And obviously it was. <laughs> so it's not just vandalism, it's just people saying, oh, look, it's new. I wonder if it actually works. And <laughs> yeah, that is actually <laughs> basically what happened. <laughs> but the, um, that guy actually freaking... I had a, I got fucking good scores in um, drafting. <laughs> yeah, same. And I was doing technical drawing and got damn good marks. Oh well. No, uh, it's it's funny that yeah, Ivy is recruiting new furs in the university. So you're on top of the game here. I don't even know why we're having this discussion. <laughs> no. You should, you should. Why are you not evan? Yeah. Why are you not evangel evangelizing it a little bit more? Why are they not joining? Where are you people? They fucking probably joining, we just don't know who they are, right? <laughs> Some of these guys joining that know they don't want to meet up, know they don't want to do this. A cup of coffee, use Isaac as, Isaac as a reference for getting into the very fandom. It's all the dragons, you know, we have so, such a freaking big influx of young dragons. An infestation is what you mean. <laughs> just, hey man, that, that, that's like racism against other oh, seminars. <laughs> Put it on Tumblr. I, I've seen people actually get upset about that, so... <laughs> <laughs> what? Do oh, dragons? Species. No, no. Or large amounts of dragons. No, like species stereotypes. Like if you say foxes or sluts, and the guy's like, no, that's not true, and blah, blah. But remember, we had yeah. that podcast about that. We had a podcast where... Yeah. Uh, foxes or sluts. No, that's not true. I'll suck anything else. Where, where we had... Uh, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I think who was that guy um, that did that, 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 he has that website uh, with all those stereotypes on it. What was his name? Remember. Someone, someone sent us a link, but I forgot oh, who it was. Oh, and that's, that's, that's J.M. Horse. Yes, that's J.M. Horse. And we had that podcast about it that actually, it, the statistics show that most foxes are actually straight guys. Oh yeah, I remember that one. And that was like the weirdest one for us all because we have the stereotype. We are, exactly, you're right. If you say all oh, foxes are sluts, we have that stereotype. It exists, which is really fucking funny because it's just, it's stereotyping something that, <laughs> that that is completely fictional. Wouldn't one of the reasons why people choose foxes because of the stereotype. <laughs> I don't know. Thinking they're gonna get laid or something. It may be. I don't know. Well, they just like foxes. I mean... Uh, 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 <laughs> They're so kawaii. What, would you... Would you... Would you have chosen a 
a jackal sonar if if it wasn't a Nubian jackal, for instance? Same question. Oh, jeez. Cut out again. Hello. Are we live? Yeah, we dropped out, I think. Yes, it was me again. I can hear again. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, 73 yeah. James frames dropped. No, it's the internet where I am. It's not perfect. It, it does that. So I was worried it was me. No, 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 no. It was it was me. All right, but we're up again. So I think it should last for a couple of moments. <laughs> well, what were you asking about? Like, would you have chosen? Would you would you choose like a, a jackal sonar if the it, if the if it wasn't associated with a Nubian jackal, for example? I've seen oh. some. I've seen I've seen some jackals that is not a Nubian jackals. Mm -hmm. Blackback jackals. Blackback jackals are cute as fuck. Yeah, they are. Which is uh, which is strange because actually, a jackal is kind of like a pest. Yeah. But just yeah, that again. Actually, always just like a fox, eh? Yeah, I was about to say that foxes are seen as pests as well. Remember? Or a rabbit. So, like yeah. Some people. A hare, fucking eating everything. Right. That's one thing. Nom 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 nom. Sorry. Speaking of um, sort of. Pests, Look. Uh, see at the end of the day, a jackal or a wolf. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Jackal or wolf. Yeah, you're there. Hi, Vic. Hello. Maybe he's not anymore. Yeah. 3G again. What? Yeah, he was there like a second ago. Well, I don't know. I don't think. Hmm? What I was saying, I don't think. You know, if people are choosing a persona, that they would take any sort of stereotypes into consideration. I think it's just what they like. Yeah, that's what I also so, think. I don't even think they look at it that way. Now, maybe some people yeah, I mean, do. I mean, yeah, I think sort of coming into the uh, into the fandom, most people don't even know what the stereotypes are, obviously. Except for foxes. I mean, seriously. <laughs> That's a generalization. Okay. That, that's a generalization even outside of the fandom. If you call somebody a, f a fox or a vixen. Yeah, okay. I understand that. Well, I suppose that's just like the way we use certain words. I mean, yeah. that's something you could use on saying like, look, this anthropomorphism thing, people do it at expressions all the time. Because it's actually yeah. bunnies that should be, it's actually bunnies, rabbits and hares that should be fucking sluts. Have you ever seen what happens when you put two fucking rabbits in a fucking room together? <laughs> there's a, no, there's a good joke there's about that. Fuck. No, they're, they're these two rabbits running away from a hungry fox, right? And yep. it's coming closer and closer to them. Luckily, they managed to get into this uh, thorn bush and they're hidden in there away from it. But they're worried, you know, if we run, it's going to try to get us. And so they're saying, should we make a break for it, or should we wait here until we outnumber him? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> they should wait there till the other. Well, what was that one show? I think it was Ed, Ed and Eddie on Cartoon Network, where he had that. Uh, yeah. he, he had the. Uh, yes. And eventually yeah, the whole yeah. garage just explodes, and you just see bunnies everywhere. <laughs> Didn't didn't Ed like have like some sort of uh, uh, bad reaction to it? Yes, I think I can't remember. Yes. That was the first bit of uh, like real inflation, or not real inflation, but like f inflation that I'd seen on TV in the first like time ever. No, I well moving right along. This is another comic. You know what's the first video game is with inflation? Dig Dug. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I remember that game. So horrible. Way back. Jesus, it's one of the most violent video games on in the world. I mean, you stick a fucking pump into somebody and you fucking blow him up. That is terrible. <laughs> Have you played Wolfenstein? No, you just shoot people. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? And, and, and people are like, oh, you know what? These games are so violent. I mean, Bomberman, you blew people up. <laughs> Dude, look back! Look back at the old Tom and Jerry's. Jesus. <laughs> yes, I know. I like that. 
shotgun shells to people's faces, <laughs> slicing off things, beating people over the head with clubs and shit. Terrible violence. <laughs> Error. Putting your Error. putting your face into a bottle, which a, w uh, along with a firecracker or a stick of dynamite, <laughs> and the yeah. daisy guy gets given. Yeah. You know. You know what? Out of all of those people, the one person that, or the one like um, the one character that has always died the most still has to be Coyote. Oh yeah, poor Wily. Oh yeah, shame. Or uh, unless uh, the Itchy and Scratchy show was actually a show. <laughs> yeah, true. Mm -hmm. And that poor cat. But, um, yeah, the coyote, yeah, man. But uh, the, the other thing is, is when I watched it as a little kid, I actually was boasting for the coyote. <laughs> I wanted yeah. to catch the fucker. <laughs> at, the end, at the end of the day, it was actually, it was man versus nature. <laughs> yeah. I was, jeez, uh, I wanted I think, to catch the little I think that on, thing. On on hmm? average, I mean, you've got like six minutes, uh, like videos or six minute episodes every single time, and on average, Wiley Coyote dies at least maybe five times in an episode. So it's like once every minute or so, like he dies. But then they Pretty say much. somewhere that nobody dies; they just get really big boo boos. Yes, yes. <laughs> so. something like that. The amount of times that he's fallen or had things fall on him. Well, it, it never really dies, it just, like, blows up but lives. Mm. Stuff like that. I, yeah, I, I still remember there was, I, I think it was like a, an episode of uh, Tiny Toons or something, where in, at the university they teach you, like, you can, you can walk across a chasm if you just don't look down. And that oh, yeah. held pretty true yeah. in, in retrospective, like, for the old cartoons for quite a while. Yeah, but the, uh, there's a lot of those things, like the the whole thing that you can actually take off the carpet and stick against the wall, which is actually a hole. Oh, that, yeah. There's a lot of those things that actually exist. Um, what I was wondering about is who remembers Woody Woodpecker? Really? Vaguely. I want that laugh as a ringtone. <laughs> no, that's man, way too annoying. No, I want to annoy people, that's why. <laughs> Everybody else is like this fucking epic song or something like that. My phone is still the standard, like, Samsung sound. <laughs> you can do better. Mine's Bob's Burgers Mine at the moment. Mine used to be a metal version of the Pokemon theme song. You know why I never make it a song? Because if I make it a song, I want a song that I like. You know how quickly you start to hate a song that is your ringtone? Mm. Just Try a song that's your alarm that tone. Calls. <laughs> Just because it's your ringtone. You, uh, yeah. Yeah, try the song that wakes you up in the morning. That pisses you off very quickly. Yeah, I know. I actually did that. My, I, I can't even listen to 30 Seconds to Mars anymore. <laughs> because I, all of the music, because one of those songs was my wake up ringtone. <laughs> my wake up long thing. <laughs> uh, anyways, we're veering completely off of topic here. Oh, oh, jeez, I almost. What the fuck is wrong with this chair? Almost fell backwards. <laughs> <laughs> That was a really bad feeling. So, uh, yeah, we're attracting people to the fandom still. I, I would say, in essence, it lies in artwork, and actually, people are doing this. We we old cons and we do these type of yeah. podcasts and stuff. As long as people are just proactive. Weird and, audio going on there. Yeah, the assholes on bikes outside his office. Yeah. Uh. But uh, we. Yeah, if, if if people just don't put it in a negative light when they introduce somebody into the fandom, then that's great. It's it's terrible to start talking about, you know, this fandom, yes, there's so much drama and this and that and this, but it's cool, you see, and you never turn defensive immediately. And I know that, def I know, I've seen that defensive thing from the start. Where people try to introduce people to the fandom, and uh, their the first things is, we are not creeps. <laughs> you understand? It's not a good start, is it? That's not a good yeah. start. <laughs> the first thing they think is, they must be creeps. <laughs> yes. 
the, that is exactly the problem that I that I was talking about in the beginning. But uh, yeah, so after some time, it's just be yourself, like Ivik says, and um, that's what I think about it. Yeah, I mean that does make mm. sense. Sure. If if yeah, if you need to act out a certain different character, rather uh, to actually talk to random normal people, then you're having a double persona going on there. Or an uh, alter ego thing. So, uh, the other uh, thing is, is, this was also discussed in uh, the convention section of attracting mm -hmm. people from outside into the convention. This is not going to happen. This is not going to happen. Unless it's somebody's friend or somebody like that and they want to tag along, but they're going to have to, unfortunately, pay the same price. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's standard for any convention. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you don't just yeah. let people wander in. I mean, unless it's one of... No, I think even big ones, you always have some sort of control over who gets in. Yeah, so, uh, well, anybody that pays the price can probably come in, but I don't think people will uh, really be interested in it if I go and advertise it on a freaking um, another website like my broadband. <laughs> Well, they could be curious. I mean, you never know. Uh, they, 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 yeah, maybe yeah. they'll come in and freaking uh, chlorify bomb us. <laughs> chlorify? Chlorify bomb? Oh, You're going with that. Chlor yeah. Chlor bomb. <laughs> chlorine bomb. Too. It's not too soon. What is too it's, soon? It's like, are you like between chlorine and chloroform here? Chlor chlor chlorify. <laughs> chlor chlorine, chlorify, chloroform. <laughs> Freak out. Chlorine. Chloroform. <laughs> Chloroform. <laughs> <Nice. laughs> nah, no, no, I'm just kidding. No, but yeah, maybe we're we're not attracting anybody into it. We're actually doing something for the people inside of the fandom as it is already. People can join if they want to, if they're interested. I mean, that's not a problem. But it's still the same thing. It's still you pay, you do this, you do that. So it's I don't know what that topic was entirely about. Because, as we just discussed, attracting people to the furry fandom is maybe a little bit not something that you really need to do. Unless you're a good artist, yeah, because that, that again, works. Again? Look, I mean, my, 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 sister, my sister does, like, you know, anthro art a lot of the time, and I mean, she's, she's pretty damn good at it. But the thing is that she doesn't want to be associated with furries. But at the end of the day, I mean, like, she's still pretty damn good at what she does. That's the thing. Mm. I mean, um, and I, I, I get this feeling that some of the people who are following her right now are probably furries. But a lot of her stuff is anime-related and goodness knows what else. But, I mean, she, she likes it. She's, um, she's probably more, you know, kitsune. Not necessarily sure what the hell I'm trying to say here. Uh... Years and tail. Yes, I know what you mean. Got. Like that, it's like that chart where it's like semi furry, furry. I know exactly what you mean. And the, <laughs> can I, can I please just doing? say this to Honan? Yes. I, I want to say this to Honan for like five seconds, okay? Honan, your face is a banana. <laughs> oh man, I like. Stop it. Stop it. I, had, I have to. No, you don't have to. You want to. Yes, I do. <laughs> Yeah, I do want to, so let me do it. <laughs> yeah, so uh, <clears throat> the convention is still going to run the way it is. Uh, I know Tetsudra, everybody actually delivered some key points there. I still need to read through all of it. I haven't really had a lot of time this week to actually go on. But um, I saw some uh, very interesting points, including in the entertainment section, which was the, sub for, uh, which was the topic I created in the convention subforum. Uh, I noticed some very interesting things there that we didn't even think about in the podcast. So we might want to look at that. Uh, yes, uh, an interesting thing over the past uh, meet, um, I was speaking to uh, Yukon. Mm -hmm. And we actually, uh, we have a means of actually creating an NPO. Okay, cool. Hmm. Yeah. So that's the that's the update in respect to that. We actually have the means of starting an MPO uh, through a sort of mother company, 
um, which uh, he's he's actually been more than he's he's more than willing to to help out with that, and actually sort of setting up a bank account that would actually be able to help with that. <coughs> yeah, that is. A bank account that requires multiple people to access it, the people that is organizing yes. the thing. So you will be one of the people. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the rest. Well, I mean, we can't necessarily like just you know blurt out who's okay. going to be controlling the account. Or maybe you're not. Just in case you know people. somebody goes, hey, 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 Apple, mm -hmm. give me money. I'm gonna freaking kill you for fifty thousand rand. <laughs> <laughs> The worst hit ever. <laughs> no. yeah. I'm not really gonna get a ton of that money back, so... <laughs> Ten <gonna> million dollars! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> ah, but frick it, this is South Africa. They'll kill you for your frickin' clothes. <laughs> People. That's true. <laughs> Speaking about the convention, though, because I know there was some yes. mention about, like, international furs maybe coming or whatever. Uh, not related to uh -huh. that weird artist trip, but so I talked to some other people around, uh, particularly why well, I emailed two firms in Australia that were organizing conventions to see what they had with international attendance, and uh -huh. well, only one actually replied, but it's from the furry down under, and they said they had about A 560 Ferdu. people. Hmm? What was that? Furdu. Yeah. So they had like 560 people, and they say only about three American and five or so UK. So, I mean, that one's been going for a while, I think. So, the take-home message is just not to expect anyone yeah, coming from you, outside you, of South Africa. You can't expect that. That is uh, that's obvious. You need events that has thousands of people to get international people there. If you're talking about just uh, just a party event, for example, H2O, right? You have what, 30,000 people in that area during a big event and then like a handful, 15 or 20 people are actually from overseas. Mm. So uh, you, you can't ex expect um, people to travel around the world with that. It's nice to have it, the exposure and uh, uh, obviously record what is going on there to, uh, via uh, audio or video and, or both obviously. And uh, put it out the side to let people see what's going on, so that they can also, so that it also gets shared across the the globe, so that it reaches uh, other South Africans as well. As a matter of fact, but um, you can't expect people to to buy a plane ticket from the United States to come to a free convention in South Africa, the startup convention. <laughs> that, that, that probably won't happen. Not in the next. No couple of years. Yeah, but I don't really think any one of us is expecting like an enormous overseas turnout. I mean, if if we can barely scratch 50 people together here, um, how are we expecting? <laughs> yeah, but I, I noticed the discussions went into that but, direction and I don't know why. The thing is, is that um, like <clears throat> most of our, most of our exposure is or at least when we started like becoming furries and things like that and I'm not well maybe maybe it's just me but like a lot of us actually became furries or knew found out about furries in South Africa from international furries yes yeah, yeah, ones that have had like connections with from the outside and that's the thing if we can get um, a big enough footprint in the international scene just by like getting like you know advertising here or Tumblr advertising there or like a couple of people who are willing to help out, like just you know spread the word. I mean, Potteroo's already started doing it. From from media started doing it, and that was one of the reasons why we sort of um, aimed for people like them in respect to having them on the podcast. Yes. Because <clears throat> having their having their names to an extent uh, does sort of help us as well, and they know this, and we know this. Because the thing is, is that having their names here means that they'll have more South African exposure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All so, like ten people that. I mean, obviously. If you, if it, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, um, the thing is, is that if we do, if if any of us do happen to emigrate to go to Canada or go to England and things like that, then like those would be the people that we know that side already. We've heard about them. We've. Um, 
we've we know who to contact. Uh -huh. I mean, I've already that's, taken that's advantage of that myself. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see, you see, you see. I'm not talking <laughs> shit. <laughs> well, it's it's useful <laughs> stuff if you know someone. Yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> then there's a whole couple of other things that was added to what we can do when we do such a thing, when we do that thing, because at the moment I'm still kind of, we're all st still concerned with, if we throw something like that, we need to sell it some way. So we need to know what we're going to do. But um, it's still a little bit long in the running. So I don't know exactly. That's why we're holding all these conversations in the in the podcast and in the, the, the site. We want to know what people want to do. <laughs> I, I will bring a ice beer and all the massive spit bry. <laughs> I guess spit would be. You will be good. on the spit bry. Four people need to eat too. They're gonna have a lot to eat. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Sakul, Sakul will be right there with you. <laughs> no. We, is, or maybe just a spit there, uh, like a, like a, a freaking old sheep. <laughs> Nobody we can is. Get a sheep. We know. Nobody is like. A, a, we can get two. <laughs> we hmm? can get two. Keep talking. Yeah, we can get two sheep. For cheap. Yeah. <laughs> free. For free? What? Yeah. Where? This is the promise that I'm getting from next to me. From who? Doge's contacts. Ah, oh, interesting. Yeah. That is very interesting. And I'm mm -hmm. talking food and I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but um, we can... Yeah, so this is why we're giving those. Uh, this is why we're giving people the chance to actually t uh, uh, to say, "Well, this would be fun. Well, this would be fun," because that's actually exactly what we want. For me, I mean, I, I don't. My uh, my, uh, my expectations uh, or the, what I would expect from a convention like that to have fun is not a lot. So, I um. I, and I think it it goes with the majority of us in this podcast right now, uh, just to actually meet the people and do things like that. But that that doesn't sell for for everybody. And we want to also it's for and we, and we also want it to be an entertaining event. We don't want just another meetup. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Well, I mean, um, a, a, an entire two sheep is is a lot better than the like pieces of like flesh that we tend to bring to Bryce anyway. Mm. Two sheep feeds like how like one proper full fifty people. Like adult adult sheep easily feeds like thirty forty people easily. <coughs> one. And that's going back for seconds as well. Yeah, one big sheep. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Do we get to eat the head too? Ooh! I know <laughs> what we can do with the head. You, you have my blessing. I'm staying far the fuck away. Stick from it on the stake at the gate. Why no? Dude, yeah. Not for you shall be gift. Uh, <laughs> that's that's that. what happened to the head of the guy that came in last. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can make a sign like that. But then it, it's just gonna look like more and more like cult, you know? <laughs> yeah, and something we don't really. I am not the I'm not the cunt wearing a uh, leaf skirt and a big mask and dressing up like an animal and going unga bunga in front of the door to stop people from coming inside. Like like freaking Majora's mask. <laughs> yes. Which coincidentally, I have finally gotten on the DS and I'm playing, and it's pretty good. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting one, but uh, we will have to check. And I, uh, the, uh, as we still said, if we don't get enough interest, which we really, really want, 
unfortunately it's gonna go, it, it can be that it can't happen yeah. no it oh, will happen really don't even happen begin to be time. like that it will happen we have plenty of time to do this it will happen we are in fact actually starting things up so it can and will happen don't be negative I'm not negative I'm positive I'm just trying to warn the people that if you don't pay attention and reply and let us know that hey man you I'm definitely gonna go that <laughs> you might not be able to go. <laughs> you understand? Green apples. Oh, uh, uh, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Forfield? Hmm? I like it. No, uh, Kane was like, the prophecy will be fulfilled. Anyway, well, I'm out yes. of topics. Anyway, yeah, yeah, I think we're I also we're a bit out of time. Minute, I think so. we can actually run this a little bit short. Uh, it's yeah, not that short. Rakuen, thank you so much for joining. Yes, yeah, for the first time. Uh, we really do appreciate it. Next time around, the, no, uh, well, fun. next, I, you know what? I actually think that be, we'd we, we, we sort of deserve to have a nice little chat with you about you. Uh, the next time we have you on. So uh, for those of you oh, listening, please. he may be on again. Sometime. Yeah, because remember, that's what we actually do with we will guests. Talk... <laughs> yeah, we, we talk about you. It just sounds so weird. <laughs> we talk about the guest. That's what we do with guests. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. If you're game. <laughs> if you're game. Yeah. For it to be yeah, I can always run like... Get too spooked, just like click close and run away. <laughs> well, well. Would you run away from your own home? I don't need to run away where from is, my own Where do you home? stay now? Actually, let's let's. You know what? Let's let's sort of do a quick introduction. Raku and Growlithe is one of the like main admins on 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 Zefir. He's been around since two thousand eight when the uh, site was actually originally started. Um, <clears throat> he's a pretty prolific speaker at times um, in respect to a whole lot of things and I mean the thing is is that you've been doing a lot for the fandom was, frankly right? so furry you've been speaking to people like Jay and yeah, we lost speaking him. to uh, now I can't remember his name that guy uh, oh. uh. I think I lost you for a bit there. I think Ivik dropped out again while he was doing yeah, the, your introduction. Yeah. <laughs> yep, he dropped out. Like <laughs> <laughs> I hear people laughing in the background. Yeah, I'm back. <laughs> cool. <laughs> because I was okay, cool. doing like a dance. <laughs> I was doing like a I disconnected dance. God damn it. Yes. Okay, because I didn't hear what was going on, <laughs> so... You were introducing Raccoon? Yeah, that was basically where we were last time. Where did you guys hear to? Uh, don't know. Uh, somewhere oh in the God. beginning. <laughs> Alright, okay. I think Ivik's line is a little bit busted. Ivik, talk. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah face we can still yes. hear you yeah okay so I'm, I'm I'm being spoke can I can I speak yes if, if you can everything's good you yes. I don't know I don't know my voice box has decided to go all glottal on me <coughs> yeah um, cool it Gollum any case yeah. <coughs> well, I was saying that Raku and um, I actually wanted to thank you for you know Sort of putting your name or putting like you know the Z the Zedifer name out there, and I mean you were there from the beginning, um, and you've been speaking to people from all over the world. Uh, and the thing is, is that you know uh, a lot of people don't necessarily sort of actually appreciate or you enough for what you do. And I think from my side, I'd actually like to say thank you um, for like giving the South African uh, South African furries. Uh, a platform to speak on and a platform to even branch out to I mean there are whatsapp groups now there's a Facebook group there's um, freaking ZFers 
clash of clans at this point. Join South Africa for clan if you're on I there. Nothing to do with those last ones, so, but they make me feel all um, yeah. So yeah, thank you very much. Yes, but the thing is that you you created you created the platform where people could join up and actually like do that. Ivic does and expand this, on it. Ivic does this awkward feel uh, make people feel awkward type of thing. Be glad he's not sniffing you. <laughs> yep, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that would be even stranger. <laughs> I'm gonna just fly up and punch you in the face, Ivic. <laughs> <laughs> I I do actually tend to sniff people's hair. Uh, Twisted Dan could in fact um, attest to this. It, it, maybe not. I n no. Yes. No. Maybe. What? It, maybe not. Oh, no wonder you didn't like creep me out because I had no hair to smell. <laughs> <laughs> and and I'm sure he was gay. normal when I met him. Also, the, what is what does being gay have to do with that? Is there some kind of intention behind you smelling people? <laughs> so, yes. So yeah, that I just want to find out whether it's a perfect mate. So yeah, that just elaborates that that is uh, the intention is completely sexual. So now you're going to yep. make people feel more awkward. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. If I'm such such thing, you he wants to bone you. Just saying. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Putting it out there, public safety warning people. <laughs> here for PSA. Well, at least then you know, you know, you, if you, you greet him and there's a sniff, you know, okay, I got a chance. Yes, you know. <laughs> it just dropped out again. <laughs> Thank God, okay. Yeah. I, yeah, I think we're done here. I mean, the internet's telling us we're, we're over this now. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I'll do the quick shout outs. Uh, thanks to Honan. Kane Osgar, Victor, uh, Dark, Enigmatic Wolf, who popped on recently. Um, before that, uh, Elik was on, Buglish was on. Thank you guys for listening once again. And uh, yeah, we will most likely see you guys back here again on Sunday. Yes. Do -do 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 -do. Hi. <laughs> Bye. <We're> Bye. Bye. <laughs> yeah, bye, -bye. <laughs> Good, guys. Bye. <laughs>